name for you. But when we were captured and sold into slavery, your name was changed. And all of that history and prophecy is documented in the scriptures. I'm going to read it to you right now. Go ahead. Verse 15. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 15. Listen up. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So God said, if you don't listen to my voice, this Bible, not the pastor, not Mr. Preacher Man, but my voice, read. To observe, to do all his commandments. To do what? To do all his commandments. Were you taught all the commandments of God in the church that you grew up in? Okay, but while you were there, did they teach you? Because there's a higher probability that you wouldn't have strayed away if they were teaching you guys laws. Right. Say it again? I said no, they did not teach you. No, they did not teach you. No, See? We're going we to touch on that too. Read. To observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which, statutes which I command thee this day. So God said if we didn't do that, read. That all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. What's your name, man? Miss Betsy Willis. My name is Yeri, Officer Yeri. And we are Israel United in Christ. Can I get the scripture that? Yes, read that. Uh, call it for Deuteronomy 28, verse 15. So we're in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. Say it again? Um, we have a, yeah, we can get you a flyer. They gave you one? Okay, you, you can put it on the flyer. A matter of fact, on the, on the front page of the flyer, you can follow along because we're reading that same information. We just gave you a visual aid now, right? So the curses on there apply to one nation of people and one nation of people only. Okay, so now we're going we're gonna to get to where your name, your nationality was changed. Give me by word. Because this is one of the curses. God said if we don't do his commandments, we don't keep his commandments, one of these curses, all of these curses is going to come upon us and overtake us. Read. Verse 37. And thou shalt become an astonishment. Look at our people today. We the only people that walk around with our pants hanging off our behind, that sell drugs to our own people, that kill each other with reckless abandon, are we irresponsible breeders? We make children and just leave them. Right. That's an astonishing thing to the other nations. We the only nation of people that don't understand the concept of divine order. Right. God, Christ, man, woman. Children. It's the woman in charge. The kids is in charge. Everybody but the man is in charge. Read. And thou shalt become an astonishment. Uh-huh. A proverb. A proverb. Hey, brother, let me ask you something. You ever heard the phrase, if you want to hide something from the Negro, where you put it? How you know that? How everybody know that? If you want to hide something from a nigga, put it in a book. We like chicken and watermelon. We always late. These are proverbs attached to us. The women ain't nothing but baby mothers. Come on. That's us. He reading on the King James Version Bible. Is the brand, it's the same one that's been around? No, for 10 years, I'm in the rehab program uh -huh. for the rest of my life. I mean, for what? For drugs. Uh -huh. And I feel very privileged that I just moved in a house six years ago. I moved in with four quilts, a twin size, a bed, without the frame, just a mattress on the floor. Uh -huh. And I am a former school teacher, I'm a former educator for a nine years. But because of drugs, I lost my job. I was seeing it, I lost my right? So now you're getting on the right path. Six years ago, I became clean. All praise to the Most High. And they gave me the uh, NA, NA book and the King James Version. And the thing that Let me tell you something. The NIV is trash. That's right. Because they've taken out scriptures. That's why we go to the Bible, the Bible that's as closely translated as possible. Because if they don't take our words, they change the thought. Like for instance, give me verse 68. Hold on, hold on, finish by word, finish by word. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword. A byword is a name given to a nation of people outside of their God-given name. We are the Israelites. Right. We are not African-American. Those are two so-called white men. Right. We are not Jamaicans. We are not Dominicans. 
We are not Mexicans. We are the Israelites right. that the Bible speaks of. That's right. We are the tribe of Judah, Reuben, Simeon, Naphtali, Gad. We are the sons of the living God. That's, That's right. right. Calling us anything outside of that is a byword. You, anything outside of your name is a byword. Among all nations, whether the Lord shall lead thee. Now, you said they gave you an NIV in the rehab, right? They, they gave you the NIV version in the... Yes. Now, watch this. Give me Jeremiah 14 and 2. I'm going to prove what I said about them changing not just the words, but the thought behind something. Okay, this will be the last thing you read. This will be the last thing you read. Watch this. Read that to her, please. It's, this is out of the NIV that they gave you. It says, Jeremiah 14 and 2. Judah mourns, her cities languish. They wail for the land, and the cry goes up from Jerusalem. The nobles send their servants for water. They go to the, the cisterns, but find no water. They return with their jars and feel dismayed and despairing. They cover their heads. The ground is cracked because there is no rain in the land. So, when you read that, it talks about the city, it talks about the, the ground, it talks about the everything except what the Bible says it talks about. Read now, let's read the King James Version that wasn't twisted up. And the NIV was also retwisted by this uh, so-called white woman. She's, a, she's gay, she's transgender, yes, all of that. This is, you can Google it, I forgot her name. Then let's read what the Bible says, for real, read. Jeremiah chapter 14 and verse 2. Come on. Judah morning. Judah, the children of Israel, Judah, the so-called American blacks, they're in mourning. Read. And the gates thereof languish. That's twofold. The leadership is no more, they're lacking, and our city was broken down at this time, right? Read. They are black unto the ground. They are what? They are black unto the ground. They're, they're black. The Bible says that they're black people. Right. Did you hear that in the NIV at all? No. No. So what the hell was that talking about? Yes. It was talking about the sun, the moon, the stars, the gates, the waters, but it did not mention they are black unto the ground. Right. right. Now why did it say that? Okay. Why did it say they are black unto the ground? Genesis 2 and 7. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7. Come on. And the Lord God formed men of the dust of the ground. Brother, what color is that dust in the, on the ground right behind you? Yes. Right behind you, by that tree. You see that tree behind you? Right there. Boom. The soil is coming out of it. What color is it? Y'all the same color. It says that Judah, the children of Israel, are the same color as the dirt. But do you know yourself as Judah? Judah. You ever heard that before? But do you, do the, uh, when you go fill out a job application, does it have, what tribe are you from? Judah, Benjamin, Levi. Does it say that on there? No, I say African American, uh, black, or other. Pacific Islander, what the hell is that? You, would, you gotta fill out American black, African American. But do you know your true nationality? Sister, do you know your true nationality according to the Bible? That you're, you may be an Israelite? One of the greatest people on the face of the planet? That's right. God's chosen people? Have you heard any of this before coming out of the Bible? No. Interesting. Give me uh, Deuteronomy 7 and 6. I want to show you something. Because this is what God says about his chosen people. And then he gave identifying markers to show who those people would be today. Because were we not renamed over and over again? How many times? Well, let's see. The, the French gave us names. Uh-huh. The French the, gave us names. When the French left... The British insisted that everybody change their name the British name. Interesting. So and that's at least twice right there. Okay. Let's see if what you just said is in the Bible. Because did that happen to everybody? Yeah, when the British came, they made everybody change their name. No, I mean, did it happen to every nation on the planet? Right. No, no, that was here. That happened to us here, right? Right. Okay. Let's see if the Bible talks about that. Read. Isaiah chapter 65 and verse 15. Come on. And ye shall leave your name for a curse. So you're going to leave your God-given name, an Israelite from the tribe of Judah, Benjamin, Levi, to you are now property of the Williams. So that's why your last name is Williams. Or your last name is Smith of Jackson. 
Johnson. These are not your God-given names. Right. What did he call it? And ye shall leave your name for a curse. If you have the same last name as the so-called white man, I got news for you. It is a curse right. according to God. Right. How can you really be free celebrating Labor Day, July 4th, Thanksgiving, Christmas, when you got the same last names as the people that murdered your people? Bring it out! The same people that oppress us every single day. Bring right. it out! How are you really free? That's free. Right. Unto my chosen. Unto who? Unto my chosen. So your God's chosen. If that happened to you, did it happen to your forefathers and foremothers? Yes. Then guess what? Your God's chosen. That's right. That's right. Read. For the Lord God shall slay thee and call his servants by another name. He killed us, his servants, and called us by another name. African Americans, Haitians, Dominicans, Mrs. Smith, Mrs. Williams, Mrs. Jackson, Mrs. Johnson. Those ain't your names. It's a curse that you called that. But he said unto his chosen. Let's see how he feels about his chosen. Because you grew up thinking that God loved everybody, huh? Yeah. Yeah? What about you, bro? I wouldn't. Bro, why would he? That is a good question. Okay. Let's see. Let, what you, what you, what you going to go? Give me that first. Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 6. Let's see if God loves Everybody, just because, Ray. But thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. So, holy. What does that word mean, bro? Holy. You know, not in Leviticus. Yes, sir. Leviticus 20, 26. What does holy mean, bro? Since you know what holy means? We have a kind of an idea what it is, right? Yeah. Okay. God says we are a holy people. Let's see what, how God defines holy. Read. Leviticus chapter 20 and verse 26. Come on. And ye shall be holy unto me, for I, the Lord, am holy. He's going to define it. Read. And have severed you. Have what? Severed you from other people. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. God says he has severed you. What severed mean? You know? What does severed mean? Divided. Cut off. Separated. You from who? Other people. Now, why would he separate us from everybody if he loved everybody? That, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you a hint because you've been misinformed. That's right. This Bible has not been read to you in its proper context. Bring it on. You are God's chosen. That's right. You have been separated from other people. That's right. What you got? For what reason? Why put, why put us on a higher plateau than any other people? We are fucked up struggling the same. Give me Isaiah 49. Bring it out. One, because he can. Why? Why? It makes no sense. It, it baffles me that our people were here that God is choosing them above all people, above all nations. And their first thought is, why would he do that? I, my thing is, am I the chosen? <laughs> if do I fall into that place of the chosen? Ah, see, now you're getting somewhere. You're wondering, how is it that we're chosen, but we're at the bottom right now? What is being chosen do for us? Thank you. Isaiah 55. Watch this. I'm going to show you. Because we're going to answer everything. Because it makes no sense for me to try to formulate, like you said, something that's all known as God. Me try to put together my little vain words to figure out why. Read. Isaiah chapter 55 and verse 8. Come on. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Did you hear what God said? He said, my thoughts aren't your thoughts. So in your human mind, you're trying to include everybody when God, the creator of everybody, says, no, I choose you, black man. I choose you, Hispanic man. Right. I choose you, Native American man. Right. You are my chosen because I said so. That's right. Read. Neither are your ways my ways. Because if you met everybody, you would try to include everybody in. I got news. 
If everybody's chosen, then nobody's chosen. That's right. If everybody's special, then nobody's special. Bring it out. Bring it out. You see how it makes, does that make sense? We. Saith the Lord. Saith me. Saith the Lord. Says Israel united in Christ. Saith the Lord. Saith the black Hebrew Israelites. No, saith the Lord. God said this. I'm just repeating what God said, sister. Now let's see how God feels about you. Yeah. Deuteronomy 7 and 6. Yeah, I lived it. I'm 62 years old. Uh -huh. I lived it, okay? What'd you live, Honor sister? This I have lived. What'd you live? I understand that the black man is doing what he's supposed to do, when he's supposed to do it. You're in the catbird seat. You're already an American. You already work this land. And you got something everybody wants, okay? And the first thing they're going to do is tell you you're nothing. Because they want what you got, okay? What do they got? They want your land. They want you, everything you work for. So they're going to come over here. They're going to tell you you're stupid, you're ugly, and all these things if you buy into it. Let me tell you something. With that mindset, you're giving them too much power. God gave us a choice. Right. Give me Deuteronomy 28, 15. This is the choice that we made. He said, matter of fact, start at verse 1. This was our options right here. Wait. Right. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1. Come on. And it shall come to pass. A future prophecy, just like slavery was, right? Read. If thou shalt not hearken. Verse 1. And it shall come to pass, uh -huh. if thou shalt not, I'm sorry, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So God said, if we do listen to his words, read. To observe and to do all his commandments. That we keep the laws that he gave us, the royal law, read. Which I command thee this day. What will happen? That the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations. No, equal to. Above all nations. Because you came up during civil rights, right? We were trying to be equal with them. We were trying to be next to the so-called white man. We were trying to be living in his neighborhood. Okay, what you saw on TV, they was trying to be equal to. But I can tell you in my neighborhood, it wasn't no equal to, okay? And but I'm, like telling, I'm telling you, in the Bible, there's right no here, equal to. Right here. See this right here? The, we, the all, slave trade. we already knew this in my neighborhood. Okay, all our black men didn't let them. Okay, all they put them out. They put them out. They went to jail and they put them out. Hey, sister, we lost that because back then we had a sense of togetherness. Right, right. We, the household, the black family was in order. Yes, there was one. Yes, there was right. an agreement. Exactly. But guess what? Now it's separated. Well, the mind state is they different. Cannot that black men cannot take care of me. All my father took care of me. But my guess, brothers took care of me. guess what, sister? And they can't blackmail me. Sister, in a way, you are brainwashed oh, no. to a degree because you're not dressing like an Israelite woman. Right. You are keeping the laws of your people. You got the right spirit. Give me the other court of knowledge. I'm going to let all sister me come out. You got, the, you got the right spirit, but now you got to get the proper mindset of what you must do. You got to get the right order. Because we had the we had the energy, we had the Black Panther movement, we had all manners of movement, but we didn't have the laws of God to keep us aright. Daniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. 
Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us. Subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcast, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.